Hello and welcome to Bread of Life. This week, Pastor Andre Riendo of Bloomfield reminds us to pray for the persecuted church, this Sunday being the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Hello, beloved ones. I'm so happy to be with you today by radio and the sovereignty of God. Each November, churches around the world take either the second or first Sunday of the month and pray for the persecuted church. We've been doing so at our church for about 15 years now, and it really has been an honor to do so. I certainly hope your church is also taking time to pray in November for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. So in honor of this emphasis, I've been spending the week thinking about persecution and doing so by looking at a passage in Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus commissions his followers to go and proclaim him in the face of tremendous opposition. Now, so far, we've looked at verses 16 to 25, which have detailed the extent of the persecution. Uh, Even their mother and brother and their family is going to hate them. Everyone's going to hate them, and it's going to be very difficult. Having given this hard news, Jesus now, at verse 26, begins to share with his followers that they need not fear, because there are three things that they can count on, three promises they can stand on in the face of this kind of opposition. Verse 26, Jesus says, So don't be afraid of them, for there's nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight, which whispered in your ear, Proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Jesus gives three great promises to enable his disciples to stand firm in the face of tremendous opposition. I want to look at the first two today and the third one tomorrow. The first one is, he says, don't be afraid because everything will be brought out into the open. In other words, everything will be brought before the Father and he will vindicate his people. We are to trust our reputations then with God. And he promises that when he exposes everything, it'll prove that our cause was right. And and in the end, it is it will be to our advantage that we did not hesitate to proclaim him here because the reward will be eternal on the other side. The second promise he gives is don't be afraid of those who can only kill the body. What he's saying is, I can protect what really counts, your your soul. The enemies of Christ can cause us physical pain, but they can't touch our everlasting soul. We need to have an eternal perspective if we're going to stand firm for Christ. As Martin Luther wrote in his great hymn, The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still, His kingdom is forever. As I said, I'm going to save the third promise for tomorrow. But consider the power of these promises. They can enable us to overcome the fear that wells up in us when we're oppressed. In June of 2018, about 150 Hindu radicals attacked four Christian families in India who had gathered for worship in a believer's home. They beat the Christians severely, destroyed their musical instruments, and damaged the house. Following the attack, the Christians were summoned to a community meeting where they were asked to abandon their Christian faith. When they declared that they would never give up their faith, they were again beaten and verbally abused. Community leaders warned the Christians that if they refused to reconvert to Hinduism, they would face severe consequences. O oh Lord, we thank you that these believers are ones who believe your promises and know that their souls can't be touched. Keep them strong in faith, and Lord, keep us strong in faith as well as we stand about on upon your great promises that you will vindicate in due time in heaven. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Andre Riendo of Bloomfield talking about the persecuted church and reminding us that this Sunday is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. 
This has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.